Hey guys, I want to go ahead and talk about adenosine for hair loss today, but before I get into that, I want to talk briefly about oral minoxidil because a lot of people have been asking me for a source on that drug, and I created a video on oral minoxidil already where I said it works very, very effectively, but I nevertheless don't recommend it because it's not safe. And I am not going to provide a source for this drug because, like I said, it's not safe. And going over why it's not safe again, people need to realize that this is a drug that is not designed for people with healthy cardiovascular health. This is designed for people who are in the late stages of cardiovascular disease. They've already tried drugs like statins, beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, and their doctors have found that those drugs are not effective. So the doctor in that case will decide to prescribe a very strong antihypertensive medication like oral minoxidil, the trade name is Lonatin, as a last-ditch effort to basically save their patient's life in spite of the risks. So when a healthy individual takes something like oral minoxidil, what that's going to cause is bradycardia, and that's a depressed heart rate. And if you have a depressed heart rate, that's going to increase your risk of developing sudden cardiac death. And that's especially true in individuals who may have some underlying congenital heart issues like enlarged heart, especially uh, with people who have an enlarged left ventricle, because the left ventricle is the part of the heart that blood pumps blood to the skeletal muscle as well as all the living tissues in the human organism. And a lot of people may have that without even knowing that. People may go about their lives never knowing that they have any kind of congenital heart issue. And as a result of that, they'll die never knowing they had any cardiovascular issues. And that risk of death will be dramatically increased as a result of having extremely low heart rate from taking um, an oral minoxidil substance, which you don't want to do. So I'm not going to provide a source for that, but if you do want to go ahead and take it for whatever reason, if you don't want to heed my warning, uh, just make sure you talk to a doctor. I mean, I don't think any doctor in their right mind uh, is going to prescribe it. Maybe some like uh, like shady doctor overseas in like Turkey will be willing to prescribe you oral minoxidil, but um, just make sure you got your blood work done. Make sure you have... Um, uh, like all the tests done to make sure that you're at least relatively healthy enough to begin treatment. Or if you're really, really unhealthy, maybe you actually will qualify it, in which case you can go ahead and just enjoy hair growth as a side effect. But if you actually are so unhealthy that you have to use oral minoxidil, then you have other problems to worry about besides hair loss, much bigger problems. So anyways, talked enough about that. So let's move on and talk about adenosine. So adenosine is like the basis of chemicals that are found all throughout the human body. It's the basis of adenosine triphosphate, which is um, actually broken down to energy whenever you're engaging in like uh, any kind of physical activity, whether it be high or low intensity. And then your body will try to rephosphorylize that with uh, creatine, creatine, and it's, a, it's an advanced biochemical process that I'm not going to get into. But the interesting thing about adenosine is that it's actually been researched for its role in treating androgenic alopecia and actually going over an in vitro study. And you guys know my opinions about in vitro studies. I do not think in vitro studies are very strong evidence. I think outcome data or in vivo studies that are tested on actual human beings are much uh, more effective data because oftentimes what you can stimulate in a Petri dish doesn't necessarily translate into data you can acquire from actual human beings. Like a prime example of that, which I've gone over before, is that saccharin has been shown to grow cancer cells in a Petri dish, and it's also shown to grow cancer cells in rodents. However, it's, um, it's, it's been shown to be completely safe in human beings. Now, not necessarily healthy, but it's safe. And saccharin is the artificial sweetener that's found uh, not in a lot of um, diet soft drinks, but in a few. I think like Tab is probably the only soft drink that still has saccharin in it. But uh, saccharin is still a pretty commonly used artificial sweetener. But going into the study, uh, what has been shown in uh, rodent studies, at least, is that it's been shown to uh, actually increase uh, the growth of the... Uh, dermal papilla cells. Now, the dermal papilla cells, for those who don't know what those are, those are actually the cells um, that make up the organism of the hair follicle, which are growing, growing hair, basically. So when DHT is attacking the hair follicle, what it's doing specifically is that it's killing the dermal papilla cells. And the, when the dermal papilla cells die, the hair follicle dies, and then you're, you're bald. So that's what you're trying to avoid with male pattern baldness. So in the case of something like finasteride, you're preventing um, the dermal papilla cells Cells from getting killed uh, to begin with. But when you're using a hair growth stimulant like minoxidil, then you're promoting the growth of the cells that DHT is trying to destroy. And that's how they work differently. And that's also why they can be used in conjunction with each other. Now, it's been shown that even though they do increase the growth of dermal papilla cells, it hasn't been shown to be as effective as minoxidil and not even 2% minoxidil. So forget about 5% minoxidil. So, um, 
Who would want to use this drug? And I guess people who are allergic to minoxidil may want to use it. And as far as my own experience with adenosine, it's been around for a long time. In fact, I first used it even before I used um, uh, minoxidil. And I used a lot of other stuff back then. I used like uh, oral saw palmetto. I used oral stinging nettles. I used uh, laser hair treatment. And for the laser hair treatment, I went to actually a clinic where like they had this like really, really advanced looking uh, like helmet that they put on your head. And it was like really expensive. I, I went in for multiple sessions for over several months and you know I probably spent well over a thousand dollars and it didn't do squat and that pissed me off because you know the amount of money I spent could have actually been used on a hair transplant back then and of course I inevitably did get a hair transplant eventually but I mean I could have saved a lot of money by not going to that clinic but out of all the things that I used before I actually went to the uh, started using the more conventional treatments like minoxidil and finasteride I would say that adenosine is probably the only treatment I use that even helped a little bit and I used very very large doses I'd use like probably six milliliters a day uh, twice a day and the treatment I used was the brand name adenogen and it's a Japanese company and I think it's actually still around today and it's not very uh, it, it's it's very very expensive so it's not a very economical source especially compared to generic minoxidil but back then like, um, minoxidil was much more expensive. I mean, it's only been off patent for a while, so generics weren't very widely available. So oftentimes buying generic Rogaine or Regain, if you lived in Europe, was the only option. So from a cost perspective back then, it was about the same as minoxidil. But anyways, I'd use it, and um, that was probably the only thing I used where I noticed any results at all. So I was losing a lot of hair on the temples. I was already a Norwood 3 by the time I started using it. And I was also use, losing hair on the crown. And that was the only thing I think that stopped shedding even a little bit. And I don't think it was strong enough that I actually got any regrowth. But it did noticeably slow down my hair loss. So I'm grateful that I used it. I mean, I regret not going on conventional treatments earlier. So at the very least, it does work a little bit. It's not very effective. But, you know, you got to give a shout out to anything that that works at all because you know we're talking about probably the biggest scam industry that has ever existed and the last time I used it just for experimental purposes was about a year ago and I know the company Adenogen still exists and you know their products are very expensive you can buy them on Amazon and I think that they price anywhere from 40 to 60 dollars for like a bottle which is like a month supply of it I mean in comparison to minoxidil I can buy a three-month uh, supply of minoxidil for 20 US dollars from Target or CVS pharmacy so I find minoxidil to be a much more uh, economic treatment. Um, however, um, you know, a lot of people may be allergic to minoxidil, so they may not be able to use minoxidil. But even if you are allergic to minoxidil, I still think there are better hair growth stimulants out there than adenosine. You can use tamoxidine, and tamoxidine actually works in a really weird way. It st stimulates a hypoxic environment on the scalp, and that somehow promotes hair growth. And stamoxidine is more expensive than minoxidil, but I can safely say stamoxidine works better than minoxidil. And stamoxidine is also good because it doubles as a very, very effective solvent for treatments like RU58 for one for your research subject. Keep that in mind. Or if you want to use CB0301 Brazula, which is much more expensive and works about the same way, that also, uh, I mean, um, stamoxidine also works as a good solvent. So, I mean, I guess the only way I can recommend something like adenosine is if, like, you know, you're curious or if you can't use tamoxidine and you can't use minoxidil and you want a growth stimulant, then at least adenosine will do something. But overall, I think it's too expensive and uh, too weak to be a very effective treatment. So overall, I don't give it my recommendation, but it is interesting and I thought it was worth pointing out nevertheless because, you know, there aren't that many treatments out there that work and, you know, uh, it worked for me a little bit. I had a okay experience with it. However, in retrospect, I probably should have just started on finasteride first. You know, I actually started with minoxidil first. That was the first um, conventional treatment I used, and that was much more effective. And in fact, uh, minoxidil was good even as a standalone treatment for a few years. But, you know, just keep in mind that no matter what kind of treatment you choose, you're going to have to do something about the DHT eventually. So a hair growth stimulant isn't good enough as a standalone um, treatment for androgenic alopecia because, you know, even if you're promoting the growth of the uh, dermal, dermal papilla cells, uh, you're still going to have the DHT eating away at your scalp and eventually that's going to not be offset by any kind of hair growth stimulant you're using. So um, finasteride should definitely be your first choice and, you know, if that's not working out well enough after six months, then consider using a hair growth stimulant and minoxidil and stamoxidine are both much better options than something like adenosine. But anyways, I just wanted to go ahead and document my experience briefly with that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit, go ahead and hit the gym real quick and I will be back with more content soon. I hope you guys are having a good week. I will be back in touch with you guys momentarily. Take care.